Hey, Miss Flame here. In this video, I will show you how I have painted Samson from Zombieside Black Plague. So now I've also painted Samsung. I was actually a bit hesitant to paint him because he has so much skin showing. I have not yet painted a miniature with that much skin. You can very clearly see his big muscles on his arms and back. When I looked at the miniature before I painted it, the part of him that I wanted to stand out is actually his muscles and skin. I think that is the key feature of Samsung that makes him stand out from the other heroes when he's on the board. Last weekend, a friend came over to play some board games. I showed him my newest painted miniature, Samsung. He was looking at the miniature from a distance and the miniature was still behind a glass window. He did not pick up the miniature yet, but the first thing he said was like, wow, I did not know Samsung had these huge muscles. I was very happy with his reaction because that was exactly what I was going for. With the unpainted miniature, unfortunately you really don't notice that feature now let me show you how i've done it let's paint i primed the miniature in the color matte white from the army painter before i primed the miniature i washed it with warm water and dishwasher soap to make sure the primer stays on well for the skin i used the colors pale flesh with brown sand from vallejo i'll mix these colors with a one to one and a half ratio I want the base colors of his skin to be a bit darker than the color I normally use. Therefore, I use one drop of pale flesh with about one and a half drop of brown sand. There is a lot to cover with this color. Because this is the first color I apply to the miniature, I don't have to worry about getting the paint on other areas. I actually put the paint on some areas next to the skin. This is to make sure I won't have any white spots on the miniature later on when I paint the other colors. For the armor and shoes, I use the colors black from Vallejo with petroleum gray from scale 75. I will use a 50-50 mix of these colors. I will mix one drop of black with one drop of petroleum gray. I want his armor to have a dark color. Later on, after the wash, I will use the gray color on some parts of the armor. To get good coverage, I applied two thin layers. Make sure to get the paint in all the cracks of his armor on his back and chest. I found that I had to check and retouch those areas a bit after applying the second layer. For his hair, I used the color Off-White from Vallejo. I used two thin layers. I want the paint to get in all the recesses of the miniature. Try not to paint over the flesh areas as much as you can. If you do make a mistake, you can easily retouch it with the skin color. I will paint his hair, beard, eyebrows, mustache and teeth with this color. After painting the teeth and mustache, I went back with the skin color to retouch his upper lip. For the pants, I used the color Ultramarine Blue with Electric Blue from Vallejo. I mix these colors with a 50-50 ratio. So I'll mix one drop of ultramarine blue with one drop of electric blue. I used one layer to get good coverage. I used a more popping and bright color of blue for his pants. He won't have any other colors on him that will really stand out. This step is pretty easy to do. Just try not to get the blue on the already painted black parts. For the hammer grip, I used the color Desert Yellow from Vallejo. I applied one layer for good coverage. I decided to paint the hammer grip first before I would paint his gloves. I found it easier to paint in this order. Because of that, this step is easy to do. It doesn't matter yet if you get the color on the surrounding areas of the gloves, because you will paint them next. For the rest of the hammer grip and the dagger holder, I used the color Beastie Brown from Vallejo. I needed two thin layers on the hammer grip to get good coverage. 
The dagger holder looked good with just one layer. For the gloves, I use the color Leather Brown from Vallejo. I use two thin layers to get good coverage. All the surrounding areas are already painted, therefore it is a bit more tricky to paint this. You don't want the color on the other parts, though I didn't have much trouble painting them. For all the metal parts I use the color Chainmail Silver from Vallejo. I use two thin layers to get good coverage. I will apply the color on his hammer, the small anvil on his leg, the metal ring on his right arm, the hilt of the dagger and all his buckles. Some areas are very small to paint. Try to use a little paint on your brush and let the angles work for you to get good reach. After this step all the base colors have been applied. The miniature really starts to look good. The next step is to apply the shade. I will start by applying the shade for the skin. For this I use the color Reichland Flesh Shade from Citadel. If you use too much shade you can easily remove any excess spools with your brush. You do this to first dry your brush a bit on a paper towel, then you can easily soak up any excess shade. I am using a 2 to 1 ratio of shade with water. So I will use two drops of shade with one drop of water and mix it well. I use this shade on all the skin areas. For the armor, shoes, his hair and all the metal parts of the miniature, I use the color Nun Oil from Citadel. I will use the Nun Oil straight out of the bottle. I will first apply it to the armor, then his hair, his shoes and all the metal parts. The order doesn't matter, that's just what I did. When you apply it to the hair, watch out, you don't want to leave any big pools of shade there. Remove the excess shade with your brush if you need to. For his hair I wanted a thinner layer of shade. For the next step I used the colors Agrax, Earthshade and Dragonhof Nightshade from Citadel. I'll first use the color Agrax Earthshade on all the brown parts of the miniature, his gloves, the hammer hilt and the dagger holder. I will apply the shade straight out of the bottle. After that I will use the color Dragonhof Nightshade to shade his blue pants. Also here I will apply the shade straight out of the bottle. This is the last shade I will apply. After this I will go back with the base colors I have just used to bring back these colors. The shade made the base colors a lot darker. For the skin I will use brown sand with pale flesh from Vallejo. After that I will paint his eyes with the color black from Vallejo. For the skin I will use again a ratio of 1 to 1.5. One of 1 drop of pale flesh with 1.5 drop of brown sand. I will first paint the raised areas of his muscles. I want to leave the darker areas in the recesses. I keep rechecking the miniature from a small distance to see where I want to paint next and to see how it looks. I start with the big muscles on his arms. For his face I keep the darker areas also in the recesses and the eye sockets. I will mainly paint his forehead, upper part of his nose, raised part of his cheeks, the top of his ears and his bottom lip. For the extra highlight I use pale flesh with just a little bit of brown sand. I will start with the big muscles again and paint very small areas where I think the most light will fall. Try not to use too much paint in this step. For the highlight on his face, I'll paint a little bit above his eyebrows, the raised area on his cheek and on top of his nose. For his eyes, I use the color black. I'll paint one dot of black in the eye socket that I think looks the easiest to do. Then before I paint the next dot of black, I will look at the miniature first to see where I want the other dot to be. And I try to put the dot there. For his hair, I will use the color off-white from Vallejo. I will use a thin layer and a little bit of paint on my brush at a time. I will paint the raised areas of his hair. This is a pretty easy step. All you need to do is to make sure you don't use too much paint on your brush. If you have too much paint it can easily go into the recesses 
and that is not what you want. I use this color on his hair, beard, mustache and his eyebrows. For his gloves and hammer grip I will use the colors Leather Brown and Desert Yellow from Vallejo. I will start by painting the gloves and I will use the color Leather Brown for it. I will paint the raised areas with this color which will make a really nice shade effect on the gloves already. From a distance you can see the shade from the wrinkles in the gloves. For the hammer grip I use the color Desert Yellow from Vallejo. I'll paint the middle part of the strap on the bottom of the hammer grip. This is a bit more tricky to do. The upper part is pretty small and you need to watch out to not paint the fingers of the gloves. If you do make a mistake you can easily retouch it. I will also use this color on the back of the gloves on the small straps for an extra detail. For his pants I use the colors Ultramarine Blue with Electric Blue from Vallejo. I will use a 50-50 mix of these colors and then add just a little bit more Ultramarine Blue. I will use it on the flat areas and the raised areas. This step is easy to do. The pants are easy to reach if you rotate the miniature when painting the harder to reach parts. For the armor I use the colors Petroleum Grey from Scale 75 with Black from Vallejo. For this step I will use a mix of about one drop of Petroleum Grey with one third of a drop of black. I'll paint the raised bubbles of his armor and the edges next to those. I will not paint the belts of his armor. I will leave those in a darker color. All you need to do is to paint the raised parts of the bubbles on his armor, leave the darker black color in the recesses. Use a little bit of paint on your brush. For the metal parts I will use the colors Chainmail Silver and Silver from Vallejo. On all metal parts I will apply a thin layer of Chainmail Silver to bring back the shine that the shade has removed. I will retouch everything, so the hammer, the small anvil on his leg, the metal ring on his right arm, the hilt of the dagger and all of his buckles. After that I will use the color silver only on the hammer and on the edges of the hammer. For the base I will use the color star brown with mojave white and brown grey from scale 75. I will first apply two thin layers of a 50-50 mix of star brown and mojave white. I apply this on the whole base. So also on the edge of the base. When that is dry I will use brown grey to paint the patterns of the stones on the base. This is pretty easy to do because the patterns of the stones in the artwork are not super straight but actually a bit messy. I will need to turn the miniature around a bit to get good angles. For the last details on the base I use the colors Off-White from Vallejo and Heike Yellow and Arbuckle Brown from Scale 75. I will use the Off-White and Heike Yellow to paint 3 to 4 stones on the base in that color. This matches a bit the colors in the artwork. For the side of the base I use the color Arbuckle Brown. Let the brush and angle work for you. I paint the side of the base with the side of my brush. I used two thin layers. I found it easier to paint to apply first one thin layer and over that another thin layer. This is the miniature all done. The next thing to do is to apply the quick shade to the base.
First, I will let the paint dry for 24 hours. Then I will use the quick shade in the color Strong Tone from the Army Painter on the base. I will not use it on the rest of the miniature, just the base. The quick shade will darken the colors. I paint the base of all the miniatures of this game in the same way. After letting the quick shade dry for at least 48 hours, I use the Anti-Shine Matte Varnish from the Army Painter. This will make sure the paint stays on well when we play the game. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can always leave them in the comments below. What do you think of Samsung now? Do you like it? Are you going to paint him? Let me know.